Hey everybody on YouTube, Carl Alexander here, and in today's video, I'm gonna be going over why I'm switching to Intel. Now this isn't an anti-AMD video that a lot of people are gonna immediately assume. This is just going over my reasons why I'm gonna be switching to Intel with the KB Lake processors instead of waiting for AMD Zen. Now, um, obviously, this is gonna be a controversial topic because a lot of people really like AMD, and I've actually always used AMD for the last 10 years. And so this is just kind of my feelings on why I'm switching because it's coming up in the comments a lot. So I just thought, you know, I'll go ahead and make a video on it. So well, let's get started. So number one, the reason I'm switching to KB Lake processors is performance. Now I know we don't know what AMD Zen is gonna exactly be like, but honestly, Intel's development cycle has just been better for consumers. We can know what to expect in a year. We can know what to expect the next year after that. It's been pretty consistent whereas AMD hasn't had a CPU in four years. So, I mean, if I'm gonna be buying AMD Zen, am I gonna be waiting another four years for the next processor? Who knows? KB Lake should be getting about a 10% increase compared to Skylake, and honestly, I'll take that. Skylake processors do great, and that means KB Lake's gonna do even better. So, there you go. I mean, it's performance, and it's guaranteed. Right now, AMD Zen is in the wind. There are vague benchmarks and rumors, but nothing's concrete. Which brings me into the whole AMD hype train. A big thing that happened with the RX 480 is that AMD really tended to hype up their product without offering a lot of data on how well it performed. I mean, they told us it was a VR-ready card for $200. Yeah, it's VR-ready, and it was about $200 for the 4GB version, but let's be honest, we wanted the 8GB version for $200, and VR-ready is kind of stretching it as it really only matched up with the GTX 970. And yeah, the GTX 970 is a VR-ready card, but for something coming out now, I was kind of hoping for something a little bit better. And that's where it came in. AMD hyped it up, offered no specs, offered no benchmarks, and just said, here you go. So I'm getting off the AMD hype train. After discovering how rough the FX processor series is, I'm just kind of done with it. I want to get to a platform that just says this is what it is, and that's what it is. Intel says it's going to have a 10% boost of performance, and you're generally going to get a 10% increase in performance. Now, even if you wanted to ignore the FX series and its architecture issues because AMD Zen does look like it has a better core architecture, including SMT, more FPUs, and a better memory controller, and stuff like PCI Express 3.0, but that's all stuff that Intel's been doing for years. But the issue here is that from the leaks and rumors, it seems that AMD is still pushing for more cores, multi-core performance. And remember, this is a channel about gaming. I don't really care about how well this does in a Blender benchmark. It doesn't matter to me. I want to know how it plays in games. And if you know much about how games are working right now, then multi-core CPU support is still kind of cruddy. I mean, the really high-end Intels don't do that much better in games than, let's say, an i5 or an i7. And that includes things like hyper-threading. So yeah, Zen's getting SMT, and hyper-threading does help some games like GTA V, but by and large, an Intel i5 is gonna do everything you need it to do. And that's just with four physical cores and no hyper-threading. So AMD sticking to its multi-core guns and not focusing on per-core performance, I think it's going to hurt them, and it will probably have not as great performance than Intel. Another thing a lot of people bring up with AMD is price. That uh, AMD's price per performance is a lot better than Intel's. And generally this seems to be true, but I don't know by how much. I mean, considering you don't need to be buying a processor every two years even if you buy a good one, I'm not sure if that's really a great benchmark. Honestly, I would say go for the best CPU you can because you're not going to be upgrading it nearly as much as your video card. I'm okay paying an extra $100 for way better performance without the hitching you get from the FX series. In the end, it will come down to personal preference and if you have the money. But honestly, as a normal person with a regular paying job, I would rather put my money into something better like an Intel processor than an AMD at this moment. As I've already said several times, this is a personal choice. This is just coming down to me being sick of how AMD is presenting themselves and you know, not giving us clear and cut benchmarks. To me, that shows they're not quite ready or the performance isn't as good as they say it is. The only gaming benchmark we've really seen leaked is Ashes of the Singularity, and that was a single image from some website. That's kind of a vague benchmark. 
I really want to see benchmarks of GTA 5, The Witcher 3, you know, big titles that will really show us how this CPU performs alongside an Intel. But I really can't wait for that with my GTX 1070. I'm bottlenecking the hell out of it with my 6350, so I'm just ready for a change, and the i5 7600K or whatever it's going to be called is probably going to be my choice. It'll offer me a really great CPU with a chance to upgrade to an i7 later on if I want. I just think that's the best option right now. So that's really it. Those are kind of my thoughts on switching to Intel. It's not a big deal. I just thought I'd put a video out there because there's so many comments that are just, you know, super pro AMD or super negative on AMD. And to me, it's all about performance and just reliability. And you know, I haven't gotten reliable performance out of the 6350. And I think a lot of people feel that way with the FX series. Okay, well, I guess that's about it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, this is actually my first kind of improv video. I'm, I'm not scripting any of this. Normally, I script all my videos. So uh, if you enjoyed this kind of content, let me know. I might do more in the future. Uh, it, it definitely will help me out with time management because the scripted videos take me so much longer. So yeah, just uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, everybody, that was my video for this week. I hope you liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, I think you know what to do. Uh, leave me a comment in the comment section and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this one in the future. Coming up next week or a little bit sooner, I'll be having more content. Not exactly sure what it's going to be, but I'll be doing a video on something. So I hope you stick around for that one, and I'll see you then.